Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about an EVAC case study that I had here at the college. Uh, this vehicle was a 2008 Avalanche and just to walk through the process of, here's a pretty common concern, pretty common diagnostic process, uh, but just to highlight the sequence that we should go through um, so that hopefully we can we can learn from it. So this vehicle was owned by a faculty member. Um, he came to me and said, hey, I have a check engine light. Uh, would you like to take a look at it? And so I had a, a class going on at the time that was fuel and emissions and advanced electrical. So it fit well. So we brought the truck in, had some students start going through the process. And so of course we started with verification of the concerns. So we went to the truck, brought it in, saw that the check engine light was on. And so we went to our Tool cage grabbed a Tech 2 for this Chevy product, right? Just right at the height of the Tech 2. So a Tech 2 plus the candy module came back to the truck and we read the DTCs. When we read the DTCs, we found that it had just one code, which was a P0455. And so the description of that code is an evaporative emission large leak has been detected. So off the bat, we know that we've got an EVAP issue. Uh, we know that it's a large leak, and so any kind of gross leak like this is typically um, fairly easy for us to find. But we want to start this process with understanding exactly what happens. And so let's go over to service information. So here I've pulled up all data, and I'm going to go ahead and select my 2008 Chevy truck. It's a four-wheel drive Avalanche 5.3. Go to the home screen. I want information about DTCs. I know I've got a P code, and it's a P0455. Scroll down and find that code. And so then here we're met with this general outline. Uh, all data does a good job of utilizing GM's SI information. And so I want to pay attention to the circuit and system description and really read through that and understand what goes on in the system. Um, and so they talk about how the system monitors operation and that it, the primary way it does that is with fuel tank pressure. And so ultimately this code was set and the condition was that we didn't see the calibrate level of vacuum occur in the amount of time that we wanted it to happen. And so we can really, we can actually reenact that test. So we can go back to our tech two and we can go to special functions within the PCM and then do a purge seal test. And so here I've got a screenshot of that purge seal test. I unfortunately didn't make a video of going through this process. And if you've been through this test before, you'll notice the engine speed is at zero. Um, so what we did, we you start and idle the truck and then you basically close up the EVAP system with the vent valves. And then you command the purge valve open to allow a vacuum to be pulled on the fuel tank. And the idea with this is that it goes through this process and sequence to determine that the vent valve duty cycles work properly, uh, the purge valve duty cycle works properly, and then we modulate and add vacuum to the system and watch does that vacuum build by monitoring the fuel tank pressure sensor. And if pressure builds, we let that build to a specific point. We then seal off the purge valve and then see if it's able to hold. We watch for the decay to make sure that it can hold that vacuum. So we did this test on this truck and it failed. Um, it was evident that there was indeed a gross leak. And so why start here versus, versus maybe doing a smoke test? Um, this is a great test to see that the valves work and see that your fuel tank pressure sensor works. And so it really helps you rule out more components within the system um, before just kind of blindly looking for leaks. With that information, we did go next to a smoke test. Uh, we put smoke in the system, and here you can see we had a pretty substantial damage, um, damage connector on top of the fuel tank at the rear. Pretty sure that this was a squirrel, and so ultimately this repair required a used fuel tank. Uh, that component was part of the fuel tank. We couldn't repair it, and so a customer bought a used tank, and we had students install it. Um, so hopefully this process, uh, Pretty short video, um, pretty short diagnostic process, but just a good highlight of the steps that we need to think about as we go through an EVAP code and customer concern um, around this kind of idea. Thanks for watching.